If you keep up with the news, you've probably heard something about the March for Science. As strange as it seems to have to march for something as broad as science, hundreds of thousands of people around the world rallied to the cause in solidarity and support of evidence-based policy. In terms of participation, the march was a huge success. But what was it all about? What were the goals, and how will the March for Science affect future policy? The inspiration for the March for Science supposedly stemmed from a Reddit thread discussing the January 2017 Women's March. A Facebook group was made, and within a week it had grown from 200 members to over 300,000. As the community grew, official stances began to take shape. According to the group's organizers, the march is a nonpartisan movement to celebrate science and the role it plays in everyday life. Its stated goals were to emphasize that science doesn't play favorites, but rather benefits everyone, and to call for evidence-based policy in the public's best interest. But what was the reason for the march? Why did so many people feel the need to take to the streets in defense of science as a whole? In 2010, an editorial in the scientific journal Nature made note of a growing anti-science streak on the American right, and pointed out that such a trend could pose a threat to the nation's future, which crucially depends on education, science, and technology. This fear came to a head following the 2016 presidential election. The main catalyst for the demonstrations was the growing concern over recent United States policies and budget reallocations, primarily at the hands of Donald Trump. Before taking office, Trump publicly referred to climate change as a hoax, promised to resume construction of the Keystone XL pipeline, and to roll back U.S. Environmental Protection Agency regulations adopted by the Obama administration. Since the inauguration, other promises and actions taken by the president include a freezing of research grants, placing a gag order on the EPA regarding dissemination of their research findings, pulling out of the Paris Agreement, which is designed to mitigate harm caused by greenhouse gas emissions and work towards a greener future, and filling his cabinet with the very people who stand to benefit the most from the use of fossil fuels. Trump's first budget request was hailed as a grim budget day for U.S. science, as it contained significant cuts to funding for NOAA's research, the EPA Office of Research and Development, the DOE's Office of Science and Energy Programs, the U.S. Geological Survey, and the National Institutes of Health, to name a few. Needless to say, these changes were met with disbelief and outrage by much of the scientific community, and thus was laid the groundwork for the March for Science. As the pieces fell into place in preparation for the event, notable figures became involved. Bill Nye, Dr. Mona Hanna-Aticha, and Dr. Lydia Villakomarov were selected to headline the march and serve as honorary co-chairs. The organization selected the fitting date of April 22, 2017, Earth Day, to hold the event, with the main protest taking place in Washington, D.C., and hundreds of satellite demonstrations planned in cities around the world. On April 22, the main march in D.C. grew a crowd of around 40,000 people, as did the march in Chicago while Los Angeles saw even more at approximately 50,000, and other cities across the country recorded turnout in the tens of thousands. Berlin and London also saw crowds numbering over 10,000 people. Each march lasted several hours and gave scientists, educators, and other participants the opportunity to engage with one another and discuss the topics most important to them and to society as a whole. The event garnered huge support, including politicians such as Senator Bernie Sanders, who has long been an advocate for environmental protection, as well as U.S. Representative Bill Foster, who is the only current member of Congress with a Ph.D. in a branch of the natural sciences. Foster said he would join the march not as a Democratic member of Congress, but as a scientist. Foster firmly believes that science should not be a partisan issue, and said, If you see a specific policy that is inconsistent with the known principles of science, every citizen who is also a scientist should speak out. The march also carried the blessing of the American Association for the Advancement of Science, the nation's largest scientific organization. While the support for the march was overwhelming, there have also been some outspoken critics, even from within the scientific community. Professor and physicist Dr. Jim Gates, who served on President Obama's Council of Advisors on Science and Technology, voiced his concern that such a politically charged event might send a message to the public that scientists are driven by ideology more than by evidence, which of course is the exact opposite of what protesters hope to convey. Professor of Coastal Geology Robert S. Young suspects that it would be better for scientists to march into local civic groups, churches, county fairs, and, privately, into the offices of elected officials. In response to such criticism, other scientists have stepped forward to defend the political nature of the march. Meteorologist Eric Holthaus says the scientific arena has always been political, citing Galileo's confrontation with the political order. His most poignant remark was that scientists are obligated to protest when truth itself is being called into question. That notion is at the heart of the March for Science. The fact that the current United States leadership is actively undermining the efforts of the scientific community, who have the benefit and longevity of humanity and the Earth at heart, is tremendously worrying. Protesters are right in saying that science should not be a partisan issue. One shouldn't have to choose between evidence and ignorance when selecting their preferred candidate for office. The fact of the matter is that science is impartial and blind to political ambition. 
The evidence provided by the natural world will remain the same long after political labels have faded into history. The March for Science hoped to convey that message, and only time will tell if anyone was listening. If you'd like to learn more about the March for Science and future goals, check out the links in the description. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already, follow Second Thought on your favorite social media, and leave a comment with your thoughts about the march. You can watch my previous video by clicking here, or watch them all by clicking here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.